Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to the mysterious Vaughn Manor, where today I'll be talking about Sherlock Holmes once again. Yes, Sherlock Holmes has been a, a little bit on hiatus here at Stately Vaughn Manor, but he returns now in full color, at least for today anyway, because we're going to be talking about annotated Sherlock Holmes. We're going to be talking about two annotated editions of Sherlock Holmes uh, because there are a couple pretty important ones. If you're a big fan of Sherlock Holmes, if you're a Sherlock Holmes scholar, so to speak, there are a couple volumes or a couple sets uh, of Sherlock Holmes which are kind of essential for you to have one or the other or maybe even both. Sherlock Holmes was uh, released in two different annotated editions. Uh, the one we see mostly nowadays is the new annotated Sherlock Holmes, annotated by Leslie S. Klinger. Yeah, this was uh, released in three volumes. His annotated Sherlock Holmes, the first two volumes were released first. They are all the short stories. And the third volume was the novels. I don't particularly love the way that was divided up. I like them when they're divided up and presented as they were released as books. I think that's the most logical way to read through them. But you know, it doesn't really matter because Sherlock Holmes stories, they weren't released in the order of when things happened anyway. They weren't released in a straight chronology. So it works just as well, I suppose. Uh, this is a gr great set. For one thing, it has an introduction by John Le Carre. So that's awesome in itself. And uh, Leslie S. Klinger uh, does a fantastic forward. He does brilliant notes in this edition. But before Leslie Klinger's fantastic version, there was the one that he had when he was a young man. And the one that actually made him want to do this kind of thing and got him into Sherlock Holmes. And that was the annotated Sherlock Holmes. It's very, it's very shiny. Excuse the shine, uh, because it's got the protective plastic on it. Uh, this is William S. Beringold's annotated Sherlock Holmes, which came out in two volumes. Uh, this, for a long, long time, was the best edition of Sherlock Holmes you can get. And it is pretty spectacular. It's got a little map uh, in here on the end papers. It's the has a bunch of illustrations, notes down the side, and uh, the stories are pretty well annotated and they're pretty well illustrated. A lot of illustrations. Some annotations down the side there you see. This is the adventure of the speckled band. So a ton of really cool information here. He has all of the original illustrations from the Strand. Uh, in his annotated Sherlock Holmes. And he has some great insights into uh, the Sherlock Holmes stories. His annotations were really, really interesting and well thought out. There were a couple things about this set, though, that a lot of Sherlock Holmes scholars don't particularly care for. For one thing, he took the stories and he tried to set them in chronological order. Which, is, which presents a ton of difficulties because there are a lot of, well, the dates are a little mixed up. Since Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wasn't writing these in the order that the events happened, sometimes the dates didn't particularly match up well. Um, so when you try to put stuff in, in any kind of chronological order, those kind of inaccuracies are gonna be pointed out. Also, a lot of Sherlock Holmes scholars do not agree that the events happened as he presented them here. This is no surprise. Uh, there are a bunch of things in Sherlock Holmes which Sherlock Holmes fans and scholars have been arguing about for a hundred years. Uh, you know, how many wives did Watson have? Who were his wives and when? Uh, other things various details which we can never really know and are only speculation anyway. Tons of details about 
adventures that are mentioned that he never writes stories about. Just a ton of little minutia uh, that are sprinkled throughout the Sherlock Holmes stories, which scholars cannot agree on. But you get a, tons of great uh, ins insights and speculations in this, and you also get a lot of informative notes on stuff that we would just have no idea about in these uh, initial uh, volumes by William Beringle. There are things about this that I like an awful lot. It is one of my favorite editions of Sherlock Holmes. I found this in Pegasus Books in Berkeley, and I practically shouted out in joy because I'd heard about this set because I bought this one first, and he talks about this all the time in the newer one. And he makes reference to the note, to Baring Gould's notes, and, and a lot of his own work. So I was really excited to find these. And in such great shape, too. And you can still find these. I mean, if you go on eBay and you're interested in Sherlock Holmes, you can still get this set, this two-volume set. So this is an interesting one to have. But if you're only going to just have one, and, you know, most normal people would only have one, uh, it would be the new annotated Sherlock Holmes, which I believe you can still get in paperback uh, pretty easily. This is a fantastic three-volume set. Uh, the production values are much better uh, than on Baring Golds. Baring Golds is great, but it, the production values aren't what this one is. I mean, just the reproductions of the photographs and the illustrations in this are just magnificent. Yeah, the design is really, really nice. You have all the adventures of Sherlock Holmes with all of the original illustrations, and the and the reproduction in this fall and this this set is much much better than in the Baring Gold set. Uh, really, really beautifully done. The production in this is fabulous. You also get more illustrations because you get illustrations from a ton of different sources. Uh, Lots of different editions of Sherlock Holmes. He finds foreign editions. He finds all kinds of different editions uh, to pull the illustrations from. So these are densely illustrated, all three volumes, uh, th for the short stories and for the novels. And there are some interesting things. If you've read Sherlock Holmes before, and if you're an American especially, there are going to be things that are just mysterious uh, in this like he mentions something called a tantalus in The Scandal in Bohemia, and you're like, what the hell is a tantalus? What's a gasogene, anyway? I have no idea. What's a gasogene? For years, I had no idea what a tantalus or a gasogene was until I got this volume. A gasogene is a device that produces sparkling soda water, which makes sense. Despite its popular association with Sherlock Holmes, the gasogene is mentioned only in A Scandal in Bohemia and The Mazarin Stone. And as far as the tantalus is concerned, a spirit case or tantalus is a stand containing usually three cut glass decanters, which, though apparently free, cannot be removed from the bar that engages the stopper unless... Ugh, excuse me, I cannot read. Uh, which, though apparently free, cannot be removed until the bar that engages the stoppers is raised. Many such cases have a padlock on the bar to avoid tantalizing the servants. Hey, I need to get a tantalus over here at the manor right quick. The tantalus is also mentioned in Black Peter. So up here we get a photograph of the tantalus. And we also, not, not a photograph, an illustration of the Tantalus. And down there, we've got an illustration of the Gasogene. As well as just a fantastic illustration of Sherlock Holmes and Watson. And you can see some of the notes are pretty dense. There are some stories where there's just an awful lot to say. Some stories where apparently there wasn't so much to say. But you still have some great illustrations. And really, you're not going to go far before you get a bunch of notes. This is, he went through this, he went through these stories pretty well to kind of pick out anything you might not know or anything that might have been lost since the Victorian age. Reading these three volumes, if you read them through, it's a great education on a bunch of different things about the Victorian age, which you might not otherwise know. 
Also, on top of every story, he got he has notes about that story. Same thing with the novels, where he talks about different things about the story that are interesting. Uh, there are a couple different versions of the stories. Sometimes the stories were presented different to an American audience, and all of those differences are listed. Some of these cardboard boxes is one of those, which is has a ton of notes on it because it has such an interesting history, the cardboard box. It has at least one gruesome moment <laughs> in the cardboard box, which makes it an interesting story. All three volumes have a ton of stuff like that. The next volume, ah, which is this one, is a little bit thicker. Great, great covers on all three of these volumes, by the way. They're simply incredible. You've got the second stain there. Lots of uh, notes at the beginning of that one. Also, in the back of these volumes, I think the first one is the first one that has... He goes over the chronology of the stories in some notes at the back. He has a chronological table. So if you're interested in Sherlock Holmes and when, when things happened, he at least has a theoretical chronology uh, right there. So you can just kind of look it up. When did this happen? At what point of his life did this, this stuff happen? And so he has events of the world, the life of John H. Watson, the life of Sherlock Holmes, events in England. Uh, all those things are kind of tallied up with each other so you know what was happening when, whenever a story happened. Uh, it's, it's pretty helpful right there. That in itself is a really helpful thing uh, for these stories. And this volume right here, this was the second initial volume, uh, has uh, some active Sherlock Holmes societies. Um, which there are quite a few of them. I suppose those could be out of date by now. Um, just a lot of cool stuff in these volumes. Just They're just fantastic. Everything you ever wanted to know about Sherlock Holmes, you can find out in these volumes. Like I said, I think they're readily available right now in paperback. I think the hardbacks might be difficult to find now. I'm not sure, let me know if you know better. Uh, I, got all the, I got them all when they were coming out, so I got lucky. Um, and I've, I've looked through these countless times. If you're into Sherlock Holmes, you'll do that. Uh, I went th I went th I've gone through these over and over and over again, uh, not just for the pure entertainment of reading the stories, uh, but just for the interesting details uh, that come to light in the stories. Uh, this is particularly good in that strange period when Sherlock Holmes, you know, sort of died and sort of came back to life. He wasn't really dead. He just went away for a while. This has a ton of information about uh, that. And one of the interesting things about this set, it treats Sherlock Holmes and Watson as historical figures. As far as this set is concerned, they're real. And so a lot of the notes are trying to explain that, or kind of explain Sherlock Holmes and Watson into the real world, which is kind of fun. So he, not only is this informative, he has that fun little side to it, where as far as his volumes are concerned, yeah, they're real and you know, it's strange that there are no newspaper accounts of this, of this thing that happened, but, you know, here's all the information we have on it. You find a ton of information, real-life information, that he uses as background to these stories. Uh, Klinger does not spend a lot, if any, time on Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's uh, inspirations for the stories, uh, why the stories were written the way they were written. Anything like that isn't in here. You can find some of that in Bering Gold, but here it's not there. Uh, this is all just about the minute details of the stories themselves and the things that are in the stories. It's all great fun. It's a very fun set to have. So if you're a Sherlock Holmes fan and you can get these, get these. 
because they're worth it. I mean, they're hours and hours and hours of entertainment and informative knowledge as well. So, there you go. The new annotated Sherlock Holmes. And if you're a serious Holmesian, uh, you can get the Bering Gould as well because there are copies of this out there just waiting for you. So there you go. That's my Sherlock Holmes video today. Hopefully I'll return next week when I talk about the next story, which I think uh, is the Five Orange Pips. I think that's what it is. I have mixed feelings about that story. So we'll talk about that one next time, I believe. So yeah, thanks for joining me here for another exciting Sherlock Holmes video. I will catch you next time. I uh, don't know if I'll have time to have a video of tomorrow or not, but I should have something up on Saturday. I believe this Saturday is going to be my 10 favorite science fiction novels, so you don't want to miss that excitement. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.